Welcome to the second part of this video where I'm going to answer a very common question. Hi, this is Sam from Teacher Dauntest. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. And today we have a very special person with us, uh, Ahmed. Hey everybody, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> on my YouTube channel and so many videos that I've posted on how can you become a dentist in Canada? What are the alternate options if you are an international dentist and want to immigrate to Canada? And also if you are looking to get into a DDS program at any of the universities in Canada. There were so many comments that I received with questions that were still not answered and I called a person who can answer most of these questions. My research took me to Scholars Dental who is offering an online course and I thought who better than their instructor Mr. Hafiz can answer some of our questions. The most common question that many of you who are watching this video might already be thinking about what are my chances to clear this AFK exam as well as the entire NDEV process? What are my chances to get licensed to practice dentistry in Canada among all the chaos that is happening? Of course, it's not the same thing. Many students were in the process and they were familiar with the old process, but now things are changing. So what do you think about this constantly changing trends in AFK exam as well as in NDEV equivalency process overall? And uh, what do you think is going to happen in future? Or where do you see yourself in the future of all those international trained dentists who are in this licensing process? So all these questions will be answered and some laughs will be shared between me and Dr. Harpers right after this intro. And so, Ahmed, if I can ask you, like after after COVID hits, of course, it's not the same thing. Many students were in the process and they were familiar with the old process, but now things are changing. So what do you think about this constantly changing trends in AFK exam as well as in NDEV equivalency process overall? And uh, what do you think is going to happen in future? Or where do you see yourself in the future of all those international trained dentists who are in this licensing process? Yeah, so uh, let's start like with the changes, I guess, mostly were in COVID. But even before COVID, there were changes that were going to yeah. happen. You know, uh, we all, I was always looking at where is it going to go? And I noticed that um, even before the NDB planned to go pro metric in 2020 or 2021, yeah. I think it was, but they had a plan to do that, you know, even before COVID. So that's why yeah. I started pushing for the online courses and I tried to become, you know, you could say, uh, just international with it so that there's no uh, you could do the course from anywhere I had to find a system that allowed people to do the yeah. course from anywhere at any time even if they're working and works with their time zone so that means you can't do it live right you have to you have to find yeah. a way to record it have them watch it for like some sort of structure right so we try yeah. to do that and then now with COVID you see how things are changing um, which changes do you really mean? Is it the, the like, for example, the changes now for AFK are mainly the question numbers, I guess. But I think eventually they're going to go online. That's what I think their goal is, you know. What do you think about that too? Like, Yeah, so the first thing they change is question numbers. Second is they might go pro metric all the way. So that might increase the frequency of the exam attempts. Mm -hmm. And I'm just more worried about those two backlogs of students. Now there's going to be a big number of students who are already like, you know, the December AFK exam was canceled and then February. So that backlog would come now. And I, I'm feeling like there is going to be, it is going to be more competitive or mm. I don't know how I should say the cutoff. Like earlier we were saying, why is everybody getting 90 plus? And I'm thinking now it would be like so many hundreds or I don't know. I'm thinking it might change a lot how it was earlier for, especially for those who want to go to university or even for those who want to just Mm. Um, complete the pathway. So do you think something is going to change this well, year? In actually, you brought, you brought up a good concept, maybe, is that, you know, how it's been, you could say the performance on the AFK has been going up year over year. And I believe it yeah. has something to do with um, maybe people getting questions, right? Or so if, if the NDEV is restarting the process, I think that's not a bad thing. Like, that's a good thing. You don't want yeah. the competition. You want to, you want to, you know, 
a level playing field, right? You want it to be fair for everybody. So if you know the yeah. knowledge and you go in with these new set of, you don't want someone to go in and get like a high mark with the minimum effort of just memorizing something that they have from a friend that was just, I don't know, right? Like, you know what I mean? That's absolutely, yeah. And, yeah. and they probably didn't learn the depth knowledge that they're supposed to learn. So now yeah. they leveled the playing field, I think, and people that are at least learning the right way, like the, learning the concepts, right? What, regardless of what questions, questions is not like the goal. I don't look at questions as the goal to study. It's a way to, to help you study. You should learn the concepts, okay. use the questions to go like, okay, I'm now practicing, I'm training my concepts. Oh, yeah. you're learning from it and it guides you a bit to go back and learn some more concepts and back and forth. There are some questions I tell people to memorize, obviously, because I go like, it's not worth investing your time in those concepts. Yeah. So you have to kind of organize that, but they're not, you shouldn't be just like, oh, here's the questions I memorize. I go and get this mark. Like it's, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't, the change may be a good thing for people that are actually getting educated with it. Right. What do you think that way? I, I so agree with you and I feel the same way right now. I'm in university, right? At Dalhousie University doing my DDS, but I did study for AFK. I got a high score, but I would give credit for that high score to some of the questions that I knew and to the pattern that I was, that was so predictable that somehow I knew that this is what NDP is going to ask those same Dr. Haas articles, those same Dr. Looney videos, those same uh, uh, University of Toronto videos, like the DPS videos, and some answers were straight coming from there. So some of these patterns were so predictable, and I knew it from some other people who had a good experience in this overall journey. So that's not fair. I think that was an unfair advantage to me. And what you just said, that we should know the content so well, that we should be able to answer all these questions. So that is, that is, I think, the ideal way of going in. Heads off to NDB for putting all the effort to make it fair for everyone. Yeah. I'm not saying that's not important to do both. Like you want to use the questions. Yeah. You did your effort. You did the concepts and, and you probably did the questions. So that way you got both, right? Like it's, yeah. but it's, it's you know, like uh, there's probably, I'm not sure if you're, there might be people where, they actually get questions, they remember questions, and then they keep it yeah. within a group, right? And yeah. that could affect the other people that are actually putting the effort, you know? And I just think it should be fair as much as, you know, like the people that did the most work, that know the most, yeah. that, that are ready. And you could tell when someone is ready, like they know their stuff, you know, they feel like I've done everything I can. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. the questions are on the side, you should do them as well. If there are questions, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, so both, both. Yeah. No, you are completely bang on the point that yes, it is. there are going to be some changes, but you think the main thing is NDV is trying to make it more fair yeah. for everyone. So that's why the release, I, I think the release questions are eliminated now. There, would, there wouldn't be any new release questions set coming. You think so? I don't know, ah. we'll see. I, I'm yeah. thinking yeah. they might still, yeah. they're gonna use a new bank, but you know, so, so the marks maybe are going, they're elevating every year. And I think now there's probably yeah. going to be a reset a little bit, you know, where it's going to go back to a regular, like, you know, back then it was amazing to get a 90, right? Now it's like, it's yeah. yeah, so maybe there's going to be exactly. a reset. And yeah. um, the 200 question thing doesn't really matter to me, like 200, even better. Like you have less questions to deal with. Um, some people could okay. look at it negatively, right? Where it's like, oh, now only I have to, I have less mistakes I'm allowed to make. Yeah, but you have less, <laughs> if you think of, you can't look at it that way, you know, <laughs> like if you have, you have less correct answers, you can make two. Uh, so, so that's you true. Know, look yeah. at it positively, and less effort. And so there's a lot of things with it. Uh, but here's the main thing, whatever they do with the bank, you know, they're going to ask about prophylaxis. They're going to ask about antibiotics. They're going to ask about, we know the question, like the concepts that are main, right? Like the science yeah. is not going to change that way. That's what I, I think. Right. So if you did if you do the work you should be able to answer the questions you know at the end of the day whether they're new or not and i'm not saying there's no you know new questions that are really out of the circle like really weird questions that you're like what's this right there, there could be yeah but you know those ones i tell like students usually you have to dodge those bullets like no one is gonna you should you know getting 100 they're trying to prevent they don't want you to get 100 percent, right so, <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so like yeah those ones maybe no one's gonna answer them right so, yeah. And the last part if, if that you did not uh, answer, Amit, is what would be your role in this constant changing pattern of NDB? Where do you see yourself as a part of this whole NDB process or for those internationally trained dentists who are in this NDB process? Where do you see yourself 
filling some gaps or fitting into some some kind of role mm. well we've always been adapting to whatever is new you know um like even during COVID, let's say our students were, they had delayed exams. Uh, when they had delayed exams, yeah. we told them, here's a ticket. You come, if you, you know, we gave them some conditions, but if you register, come back for a month, no charge. Just an example, okay. right? We're adapting, mm -hmm. we're adapting to things, you know, because you, usually you take a course and you're planning to take the exam right after. So yeah. when their exams got delayed, like, yeah, I, I don't want my students to go to the exam without that final feeling support, like that last, you know, month. So we issued these kind of tickets for them saying that, look, if you go, if you register for the exam, you can come back for a month and we'll do a review with you, you know, and that's just to help you prep for the exam. Um, so that's, that's the, the, the concept. Yeah, I hope that they appreciate. so yeah. the concept is uh, to be adaptable, right? You want to adapt a bit. Um, so we are pretty much, you know, ready for that future. Like, I feel like we're we're we've got to the level where our course could be taken from anywhere in the world. We're shipping to anywhere. It's yeah. flexible enough so that time zones don't matter. The only part would be like the live sessions that ha you have to be on time, but we try to make the recordings more plus supported by live sessions. So in the future, we want to be whatever it takes us. Like we're teaching dentists what they learned from school. This is what they learned from school. Yeah. We want to fill in any gaps to make it complete before yeah. they go on to their exam. That's how I see my goal is, you know, in, in general, because I feel like it's doable, you know, like even yeah. since I was studying in school, I just was bothered that I didn't get it. You know, like I was like, what? Like, how come they're not? It's teachable. Like, why are they just giving me this yeah. to memorize? And I don't know what's going on with this thing. Right. And maybe we were just too young in school. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a different that stress. That is one possible reason we did <laughs> not know how, like what we are going to do after. The, I did not know, at least like when I was in school, I was just happy that I'm not in high school anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah, just yeah. happy to be in the university. <laughs> yeah, Different pressure, you know, you're like, what's this guy yeah. talking about? Let's just finish. Like, so maybe that's a different yeah. um, like mentality we were back then. But um, yeah. No, the thing is, like, I had a pathology professor that was really good, you know, and I remember, like, I still remember quotes he says until now, like, the things he taught, you know, about cells, and, and I still even use it myself. So it, it's it's doable if you have that, right? And yeah. that's what I'm trying to provide, that kind of teaching for all the subjects, okay. for students, even, you know, like, if we had a student that took the AFK course and passed the IMBDE exam, you know? Another one took okay. capacity. So it's it's general. It's not just limited to one, you know, here's questions for this yeah. exam. So the future, wherever it goes, if it's going to go online, we're ready. If it's going to go, um, it's, if, if, if questions are going to change, like how much are they going to change? You know, yeah. let's, whatever field they, they decide to, to include, we'll, we'll, we'll research that, make a video, yeah. put it in our curriculum and we're ready. So we're part of that dental education system that happens after you graduate, if you want to fill in the gaps that you had from university. That is an excellent answer. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. The third question is one of the most common questions that many of you who are watching this video might already be thinking about. What are my chances to clear this AFK exam as well as the entire NDEV process? What are my chances to get licensed to practice dentistry in Canada? among all the chaos that is happening it's, it's the chances it's a hard oh, honestly it's a hard question to narrow down on but uh i agree that <laughs> like, especially if you want to take into consideration the new the new like situation right now like with the pandemic yeah it kind of gets a little bit more tricky to answer um i could just use the numbers that show the passing the the you know the past or history passing rates of on the ndb website right so if you see the afk for example the passing rates yeah. are between 40 and 50 percent they never crossed 50 in the last few years so it's in the 40 percent um the yeah. acj is in the 40 percent now the acs is in the 30 percent like 30 to 39 percent right so that you could kind of conclude for you if you pass one pass the other your chance of getting through the entire process maybe is between I would say 40 to 50 percent or 35 to 45 percent if you want to if you want to kind of like combine all three together would that make sense kind of in a way as a percentage yeah that kind yeah. of makes sense yeah so this means you know half the people are going to make it almost right and half the people are not going to make it but this doesn't mean you'll never make it it just means maybe on your first attempt you won't make it right yeah if you if you analyze the numbers that way so 
So the question is, why are those half making it? And why are those not other half not making it? I guess you could say, I think part of it is courses. I think the level okay. of people taking courses have been increased for sure. Like I yeah. know that for sure. But back then it was less people. Now more people are taking courses, making it more competitive. So what, what I think is happening is that, okay, some, let's say how many people do you think are taking courses in general now? Maybe, I don't know, I'll just guess 300 people. What do you, I don't know. What do you think? Is that, would you think no. like if you calculate the institutes and then you go, okay, maybe there's 50 here, 50 there, 100 here. I don't know. But let's say there's I'm, 300 I'm, people. My number goes about, my, my number would be like about, about 500. I, th I don't know. Even more, because, right? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, even 500 more. people. And let's say who's taking the AFK at once is 800 maybe right now. 800 yes, or something. Yes. So, so you could say that's even more than 50%. If it's at your number, 500 people, yeah. more than 50%. Uh, my number would be around 40%, right? Okay. So you could say like around there is who's passing, right? Now, not, that's not to say that everybody taking a course passes. There could be people from not taking courses that pass and people from taking courses that fail. But the majority yeah. of passers are people that took courses. Okay. I, I, I see that, that the majority of them that passed took courses. And when they, when the other half fails and they realize, hey, this is not just an easy exam you could go to just because you work 10 years or because, you know, it's not, <laughs> you know, like that's the yeah. normal thing. That, <laughs> it's not just something you can just oh. go to and wing kind of. Uh, yeah. When they realize that those people on the next cycle, they become the people taking the courses. Yeah. You see, and then there's new people that come in thinking it's easy and it continues, you know? So what's, what I'm curious about is when there's a time where most of the people are taking courses, what's going to happen? Is it actually going to increase the passing rate or are they going to fail more? Pe I, I don't know. Like that's something weird, but, but that's what I think is yeah. happening. What do you think? Is that, does that describe what's happening? You think in the environment? Like what? Yeah, that's what that's pretty much actually uh, describes what actually is happening, and maybe how, how what we discussed earlier, and maybe he's trying to change the pattern so that it becomes more fair, maybe less dependent on release questions, maybe less dependent on mm -hmm. previous questions those people kind of remember. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's the reason because the more people start joining these uh, classes or courses, the more it would become a small group or the privilege for that group to know more compared to other international it's student dentists, yeah, but yeah. yeah, but still it's fair too, right? Like if, if some students are actually taking more guided training, they are, they are like asking for a coach who would coach them throughout this process. They are putting more, uh, how should I say, organized effort towards the exam. Yeah. Maybe that's a good thing too. Maybe I, this shows how serious they are. Yeah. I don't see it unfair to learn. Yeah. Right? If you get help from someone to learn, Exactly. Yeah. But if, if there's a group, let's say like a certain, you know, I don't know, maybe a certain community or a group that they're keeping internal questions between each other that no one has or something like that, that gives the advantage. Right. And they're not sharing that it with could anyone. Be an and yeah. they have it organized in a way that instead of organizing the effort to learn, they're organizing effort to get questions from the exam. That's an unfair thing. Right. That would be that's kind absolutely of, unfair. That's yeah. what I so. So I'm more toward like at least learn everything. And if you get yeah. access to questions, like if you, if you did happen, you know, like you're probably not going to say no. Like if someone, if you have a friend that's saying, Hey, I have questions <laughs> here, you're not going to say no, yeah. but do your, do the thing you're supposed to do. And then yeah. you could do the extra. Like that's, that's, just, I want people to leave AFK with knowledge, not with luck. You know what I mean? Like that is so true. That's a very valid statement. Yeah. Because you're never going to come back <laughs> to AFK. Like you're never going to open a pharma book after you pass. Let's face it. <laughs> Unless you go to university. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still haven't opened. <laughs> Still haven't. But then you're, yeah. you're like, a patient comes with this drug, you're like, you know, you don't Let know. Let me open go, Lipin you, cut. <laughs> yeah, you got, or you gotta go Google it. But even if you Google it, yeah. it says anticholinergic, you're like, I don't know what that, you know, like, so you yeah. have to know this, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So this is awesome when we can chat about this NDEB process, AFK exam, and everything around it in a candid way with Dr. Hafiz. In next video, we are going to share some more laughs and more information with you. So please make sure you watch the next video as well. If you haven't watched the previous video, I'm giving you all the links right here. Click this one or this one and make sure you subscribe to my channel, share with a friend who is in the same goal and stay healthy.